the purpose for for today is just to to give a, an overview of the main points of the second of the third thematic uh, report my second report on services of general economic interest and we will as planned we will try to to go relatively uh, quick so that we can have more time for questions at the end so perhaps if we could move to the next slide please So the, the idea is to showcase that under the current rules on services of general economic interest or, or SGEI, um, significant financial support can be granted to pursue social economy objectives. So what we aim to do with this presentation is to clarify what is an SGEI, what is, what is that concept, and whether the granting of financial support first amount to, amounts to state aid under Article 107, Paragraph 1 of the, of the treaty. And secondly, if it is a state aid, does it have to be notified to the European Commission? And thirdly, if so, what are the conditions that the Commission will observe when reviewing notifications for SGEI support uh, in the form of in the form of state aid for the compensation of for the provision of, of public services or SGEI. And given the the the, the thematic uh, core of this of these three workshops, we will try to specify the conditions and the criteria under the current legal framework, specifically targeting social services and the social economy. And we will discuss the criteria together with the relevant cases from the Commission's practice and where available the case law of the court. Of the courts. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? So what is a service of general economic interest? Even the court and the Commission have uh, referred to them sometimes as public services. Roughly, it's what we understand in many of our legal orders as public services. The Commission has defined services of general economic interest as economic activities which deliver outcomes that are in the overall public good that would not be supplied or would be supplied very differently by the market alone without market, without public intervention. We can take from primary law, from secondary law, from commissions, uh, guidance and practice, some elements. These services are important for the overall economic, social and cultural development of society in each member state and in each region. They can be different from one member state to another. They can be different from one region to another. They are also tailor made to the cultural situation of each country. Examples include healthcare, education, public transportation, social housing, water supply, childcare services, or telecommunication, to mention by but a few. According to the the law and also the case law, they should be available and accessible to the entire population. They are also fundamental right. The access to services of general economic interest under the Charter of Fundamental Rights, Article 36. And the case law has clarified that the entire population doesn't mean the entire population in a given country. It can be then a particular group, particularly those in need or those most vulnerable in a given in a given society. The case law also clarif clarifies that these services must carry out a special task task in the public interest. So member states have to explain why a particular service is a service of general economic interest and why it's a special service, not just any services provided by the market. Therefore, member states must clarify the reasons why the service in question differ from other services. However, public authorities and the member states enjoy a large margin of discretion in defining what is a service of general economic interest. The European institutions, and particularly the Commission and the Court, will already review whether there has been a manifest error in the definition. And there are cases 
where the Commission found that there was a manifest error. For instance, to consider tourism promotion as a service of an economic interest, the Commission said, and rightly so, why is this service uh, so special if it's carried out essentially everywhere by, uh, by, by the market? Next slide, please. So our next question is, assuming we understand what the service of general economic interest is roughly, if public authorities grant financial support for the provision of these services, is that financial support state aid? And here we go back to the discussions we had in our first seminar. The compensation will have to comply with the criteria of Article 107, Paragraph 1. So all the criteria that we described. Remember the concept of undertaking, economic activity, effect on trade, distortion of competition, selectivity, state resources, and, and effect on trade. However, the Court of Justice has clarified that one of those elements, the element of economic advantage, is different in this context. The court has introduced substantives and formal criteria to define when the compensation for the provision of these services grant an economic advantage to the provider. And the court has said, again, introducing formal criteria, which is quite unusual in, in the case law, that there, there is no advantage, therefore no aid, because all the criteria are cumulative, if the public authorities fulfill these four criteria. If there is an entrustment act, so the service provider has been entrusted by a public act, which can move on, can range from a legal act, legislation to a contract. That act or acts must provide the parameters of compensation. It doesn't have to be a precise formula, but it has to be clear how the provider is going to be compensated. And that must include what will be the actual compensation, which might uh, must take into account the possible revenues, which will be deduced from the compensation. But it can also include, and I say it can, it doesn't have to, but it can include a reasonable profit for the provider. Thirdly, and related to the second one, we must ensure that there is no overcompensation. So only the actual net cost of providing the service plus eventually the reasonable profit can be compensated. And fourthly, who can provide this interest in the public service or in the public uh, in the public interest of the service in the public interest or a special task? It can be either a provider selected pursuant to a proper open and transparent public tender procedure, or it can be an undertaking selected in a different way, but that undertaking must be uh, through a benchmarking exercise, must show that this is well run and uh, equipped properly in order to provide that service at the least cost to the, cost to the community or eventually at um, the most advantageous economic possible way. Assuming that a given compensation to a provider does not fulfill any of these criteria or does not meet any of the requirements of the established by the court, it will mean that there is advantage and probably that there will be a state aid. Does it have to be notified to the European Commission? You will see that, and you may have already seen in the paper, that it is most likely no because the Commission have adopted two strong instruments to avoid notification. The SGI, the minimis regulation, which has been actually now proposed a modification, we'll get back to that, and the SGI decision that essentially works as a block exemption for services of general economic interest. If the criteria of those two instruments are not fulfilled, if we cannot really frame or square our service in that criteria, then it will have to be assessed under the SGI framework. Next slide, please. So very briefly, let's review the main elements 
of the de minimis regulation in this context and the SGI decision. The minimis regulation as it currently stands allows for compensation not exceeding 500,000 euros over any period of three fiscal years. The compensation can be provided and in my view should be provided for to simplify as a grant, as a loan or as a loan guarantee. The beneficiary understanding must be entrusted, but the entrustment is not so detailed as in the uh, decision or the framework. It just has to be entrusted in writing, explaining the prospective amount of the aid that is going to receive and making sure that there is a provision stating that, it, that this is granted under the minimis. So it is the minimis aid. The regulation clarifies that the minimis aid may not be granted to undertakings in difficulty. This was uh, modified during the COVID pandemic, but for the specific context of undertakings that became in difficulty due to the COVID, but that fortunately is, is the past. And importantly for the providers, for many of, of you in practice, there is no verification of the cost incurred in providing the service. So there is no need to check whether there has been overcompensation in this context. Similarly, accumulation is allowed. You may receive the minimis aid and the minimis SGEI aid, provided that you don't go above the 500,000 euros in three years. What if you go actually beyond that? If you go beyond that, then the decision applies. The decision works as a block exemption regulation. It generally, it applies to compensation up to 15 million euros per service per year. So 15 million euros per service of general economic interest per year. This threshold, which is already relatively high, does not apply to social services, where it can go beyond that, as we will see in the next slides. The compensation is granted only for, to cover the net cost and the reasonable profit. So this, as you can see, clarifies and develop the Altman framework. The decision provides for a for a safe harbor, saying that if the if the reasonable profit is the return on capital, not exceeding the relevant swap rate plus 100 basis points. So in other words, the internal rate of return amounting to that that is considered reasonable by the Commission. The content of the entrustment is more detailed than in the, the minimis regulation, and it clarifies that the duration should not be longer than 10 years. Importantly, there is no need to select the provider under the decision according to the public tender procedures. That's something that you might need for the ultimate definition, but not for the compatibility assessment under the, under the decision. Next slide, please. Thank you. If the compensation doesn't fit the criteria, and this is, is going to be strange in the case of social services, because there is no threshold for social services. So the application of the threshold for compensation of social services, as we will see. So the framework, the SGI framework, is probably not so relevant for our purposes. But for just for, for completeness, if compensation for the provision of a given service of general economic interest cannot be justified under the regulation, the minimis, or the decision, then it can be justified under the framework. So it can go beyond 15 million euros, but here the public service must be clearly not a service that the market can provide. It can also, it must also comply with the public procurement rules. It must have some incentives for quality and for efficiency. So precisely because these services are very large and very significant, the conditions are tougher for the uh, for their compensation. It has to be a detailed compensation, a detailed entrustment, and the duration can be longer than 10 years, but it, it can refer to the depreciation of the main assets involved. But again, this is 
in my view, not so relevant for so for most of this of your of your social uh, services for the reasons that we will see in the next slide. Next slide, please. We can move to the next slide because this this is something I think very useful, but you have it in the in the paper. It, it, it explains the different options for avoiding aid and if there is a state aid, how to how, how can it be considered compatible? What is very interesting also uh, from a legal point of view is, is very interesting is the specific provisions that, this, that the Service of General Economic Interest 2012 Commission decision, the one that we just discussed, makes for social services. Article 2, 1, paragraph C of the decision allows for the granting of significant amounts of state aid for the provision of social services, I quote, meeting social needs as regards health and long-term care, child care, access to and reintegration into the labor market, social housing, and the care and social inclusion of vulnerable groups. So there is a, an immediate advantage for these services when compared to all the other services being that for these services, the compensation can go beyond 50 million euros per service per year. And you don't have to go for the framework for, for compatibility that's already allowed by the decision in the case of social services. What are these services? The list, precisely because it works as a block exemption regulation, must be exhaustive. It cannot be open-ended. At the same time, the Commission has been flexible enough to allow for the interpretation of this provision, particularly the last one. And the Commission, for instance, has clarified that meeting social needs doesn't mean that only if people with less resources are involved, these services can be provided. For instance, childcare services can be provided even if not everyone is under a situation of economically disfavored um, recipients. Similarly, by social inclusion of vulnerable groups, the Commission has clarified that aid can be granted for under the Service of General Economic Interest framework for services for people with disabilities, services for migrants, services for the homeless, parenting support services, services supporting over-indebted persons or LGBT social services. Similarly, and this might be particularly relevant for many of you, social and work integration enterprises also qualify under the provision of access to and reintegration into the labor market. So again, the Commission has tried to strike a balance between the necessary legal certainty that the block exemption must provide, and at the same time, the flexibility and the possibility to interpret the decision. One question that you might be wondering, what if my social services is not really, doesn't really fit within this? Then you apply the commission decision, general provisions. It can still be granted, but then the 15 million euros per service per year will will apply. And if you go beyond that, the framework will have to be used. Next slide, please. This, and I, I think this is particularly uh, useful, not so much for the purposes of, of legal certainty. These are not commission guidance. These are not court cases. So it, it cannot really function as a safe harbor or as a block essential regulation, but I think it can be a very good place to look for examples that of social services under the framework and under the, the decision that are being used by different member states and that they report to the European Commission every two years as provided in the SGI legal framework. So for instance, in Germany, the compensation of wage cost for um, older workers to cover the personal cost of social enterprises for socio-educational uh, support of long-term unemployed or to maintain and create rehabilitated low-cost social housing that's considered 
social services under the article that I just mentioned. So it can be beyond 15 million euros without a notification and, and under the decision. Same for Greece. Actions to integrate young people with disabilities into employment, organization of camps for vulnerable groups of the population, or support for entrepreneurship skills of individuals from vulnerable groups have also been considered social services under the SGI decision. In the case of my own country, Spain, to cover the, the wage costs of staff who provide support to vulnerable people, persons uh, integration process, A, to encourage the employment of vulnerable people for the beneficiary undertakings or support for integration people with disability for integrating people with disabilities or with mental health disorders. Here there was another example. It was a, an, a service of general economic interest to compensate an energy company for providing electricity for vulnerable people. So essentially to pay the bill of the energy company over a certain period for some groups was considered as SGEI. In Poland, creating and providing rented or cooperative housing for persons of moderate income, social housing rental services entrusted by municipalities to social, to social housing association or subsidies for meals sold in so-called milk bars are also one of those services that can be compensated under the decision. In Sweden, Shelter employment by San Hall. There was a commission decision that we discussed in the first uh, seminar, as you may remember, that is also clearly uh, a social service. Compensation for organizing and providing housing for the elderly, social housing, again, also included in the decision. Or compensation to cover the cost of subletting by higher, higher education institution. Here, you see, that the meeting social needs doesn't necessarily mean, as it was explained by the Commission in the case of childcare, in, the, in this case of higher education institution, it doesn't necessarily mean that it may not target a particular vulnerable group, provided that the member state justifies and explain why that group deserves this qualification. Next slide, please. And some more concrete examples can be found uh, in the evaluation, the recent evaluation that I uh, encourage everyone to, to read because it's, it's, a, it's quite an interesting document. And also the, the input provided by social entities, by the Economic and Social Committee and by other stakeholders uh, is particularly relevant in our context. So the Commission published this evaluation recent, very recently. Uh, in, in the evaluation has some information that is, I would say, particularly interesting for our purposes. For example, concerning the notion of state aid that we discussed in the first uh, seminar, the, the evaluation clarifies something that can be already seen in some guidance document and also in some commission decisions, that there is no state aid because there is no effect on trade if a given beneficiary, which is the case of social entities rather often, supplies goods or services to a limited area and is unlikely to attract customers from other member states. And it cannot be foreseen that the measure will have the effect on, on uh, of cross-border investment or establishment. You may remember that we discussed the example of the Santa Casa de Misericordia de Tomar in Portugal, where it was considered that social service, particularly health, health related care services provided by that entity did not amount to state aid. And therefore, if there is no state aid, you don't need to justify it under the services of general economic interest legal framework because there was no effect on trade. The, the Santa Casa de Misericordia was catering for the local population. There were no international investors, there was no, that it was actually remote from Lisbon or from other places that you could have some international customers or clients or, or in, the case, in this case, patients. So it was a, an example, a good example of the lack of effect on trade. Evaluation also makes some uh, relevant clarifications concerning social housing and reasonable profit. The concept of social housing as such is not uh, considered an obstacle. It's, it's not unclear. 
However, there have been some concerns about limiting, limiting the scope that public authorities may decide to give to social housing. In other words, does it have to be a group that is vulnerable by reason of the economic means? Or, or, and what is the, the, the right group? There was a, a very uh, interesting and helpful decision of the European Commission concerning social housing in the Netherlands, concerning the WOCOS that, that went up to the court and was validated, where you have information on how that can be defined. Um, secondly, several public authorities mentioned that they have experienced difficulties with the concept of reasonable profit that we discussed before. You may remember it's one of the criteria included in the decision, also in the framework. It comes from the case law of the court in Altmark. However, it might not be easy to apply in the case of social entities. Also because one of the features of social entities is to reinvest the profits in themselves. So having no profit, and therefore it's difficult to fit the reasonable profit in this context. That was also raised by the European Economic and Social Committee during the evaluation. Thirdly, there are some cases where concerning the, the, the concept of advantage and selective uh, advantage and also other provisions, other concepts included in the, in the evaluation such as single undertaking, there were doubts about the concept of single undertakings. In, the, in this case, the draft reform of the minimis regulation provides, as admitted by the European Commission, provides clarification of what is to be considered as a single undertaking that comes from the case law, the recent case law of the, of the court. The evaluation recognizes that there should be more coherence between the primary law concerning services general economic interest and pillar of social rights, including uh, regarding primary law, the Charter of Fundamental Rights. And in, interestingly, a participant advocated for the specific recognition in the Service of General Economic Interest legal framework of operators acting in the social economy, where profits can be made, but they will not be distributed. Next slide, please. So, thank you. So I'm, I'm trying to to live up to the commitment to finish within uh, uh, half an hour, so we have some time for discussion. I think the the current rules, the, the legal framework concerning services of general economic interest or public services, provide significant opportunities for funding in the case of social economic entities, as opposed to all other sectors. It has been recognized as a specific area where public funding can be particularly important. And therefore, there is more flexibility clearly than in other sectors. There, are, there remains uncertainty as the Commission recognizes in the evaluation concerning important concepts such as economic activity, effect on trade or reasonable profit. And this may explain why as actually our, our uh, quiz this morning showed, why the service of general economic interest uh, is not used to its full potential yet. And that's something that perhaps after this framework and after this workshop, we can we can perhaps do um, use uh, more. The workshop uh, or the presentation has tried to show also that significant public support can be granted to properly define the service of general economic interest. And there are many references in the report. Just to mention, I took five countries, but of course there are 28. The UK was still included in that. So there are many examples that you can take from, from there of social services. And finally, there are specific provisions that make the rules more flexible and the European institution and particularly the, the Commission, I must say, they, they are fully aware of the benefits uh, as, the, as the Social Economy Action Plan also reveals. They are fully aware of the benefits of the social economy and I think there is a partnership and we will get back to that um, in place here that can um, be fully exploited for the benefit of social economy uh, entities and more generally
to the social economy uh, altogether. So thank you very much for your attention and happy to take questions.